Hi. Now that you're all handed in the assignment for uh, session seven, we're going to talk about capital structure. What I'm going to do is I thought I would just sort of walk through the uh, questions that uh, you you answered as um, that you've handed in before the session. So let's sort of do that. And here's what I, here's the situation we had. Uh, okay. All right. B is basically what I should. ABC company. Uh, U.S.-based firm has a five-year, 5% 5 coupon bonds that are trading in the market at 95%. Based on reviewing number estimates, uh, ABC feels its beta of 1.1 reflects the current risk of its stock, and the risk is both the business risk and financing risk. Long-term government bonds currently have a 5% yield to maturity, and ABC's finance team feels that the market risk premium is 10%. Okay. Right now, uh, basically, ABC has a debt-to-equity ratio of 1 and faces a 35% uh, tax rate. So, so I've asked you to address a number of questions for ABC. So let's look at those. First thing I ask you to do is, what is your estimate of ABC's cost of debt, pre-tax cost of debt? Well, it's a five-year. The time to maturity is five years. The coupon is equal to 5%, and the face value is equal to, assume it's equal to 100, and that the price is equal to 95% of face value on doing it. So the idea here is just need to find the yield to maturity on these bonds, and so 5% coupons paid semi-annually. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten payments. Get rid of this part. Oops. Got ten payments of two dollars and fifty cents each. Okay, every six months because it's a five percent coupon divided by uh, two, so semi-annual payments. And the final payment is the face value of 100 plus the coupon payment of 102. And the price with a face value of, for face value equal to 100, the price is 95. So what we want to do is find the yield to maturity. And the easiest thing is what we need to do is let's look do it in Excel. So let's quickly go over to Excel here. And I'll here we are in Excel. So what do we need to do? Well, we know, let's put in the payments. We have one, two, three. We have ten payments. So I'm just going to copy that all the way over. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Each payment is two fifty. And so the easiest thing for me to do is just keep them all at two fifty equal. Okay. And the last payment is also plus one hundred. Now the easiest way to do that is to take the price, which is minus is 95. So we put in minus 95, and calculate the internal rate of return for this for this series of payments. That's the internal rate of return. Give us some decimal points. Uh, this is the uh, semi-annual IRR to get the yield to maturity. We just take that times 2, and we wind up with this as the yield to maturity. And let's just keep it at two digits. So we have 6.81 is the yield to maturity. Okay. So let's go back to what we have here. And so our yield to maturity then is 6.18%, which is we're going to assume that is ABC's pre tax cost of debt. Now, well, we want ABC's after-tax cost of debt. We want the, the key here is that the after-tax cost of debt is different bec because interest is deductible. So the after-tax cost of debt is just after-tax cost of debt is just whatever the rate is, KD, times 1 minus the tax rate because interest is tax deductible. So in this particular case, it's 6.18% times 1 minus the tax rate, which was 35, which was 35%. 
So the after-tax cost of debt would be 4.016%. So that this is just this times 0.65. Okay.